praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tuko tena live katika Nyokonyo Studios. Na tunashukuru Mungu. Samahani kwa masaa tulikuwa tumesema ni saa kumi na moja. Ila tunashukuru Mungu ya kwamba tumewasili. Amen. Kwa hivyo we are ready again. We are ready and I believe that you also are ready to receive. As I said, from the mind of God. We are not receiving from the mind of people, but from the mind of God. Tonight, tunapokea neno la buwana katika maisha yetu na katika mili zetu kutoka katika mawazo ya mwenyezi mungu baba mwenyewe. Na ninaamini mungu wa kwamba leo hii unaenda kubarikiwa. You are going to be blessed. We are blessed. We have been here since morning interceding and praying for this day and I believe that God is going to do great things in your life praise the Lord so I welcome you wherever you are our viewers we love you we acknowledge your presence though we cannot see you but we know that you are there receiving from your Konyo studios I'm your host Pastor Mary Nyokonyo of River of Life Christian Fellowship International. I welcome you once more again. This week we are still tackling the spirit of reversion sim in our lives. It has to end. So tag your friend, call somebody to join you, share, share with the friends, share in your platform, share with the groups so that you can all receive i want somebody to get this message because many people are bound and this is the only true fasting that god needs to loosen to loosen somebody and i know that today somebody is breaking forth somebody is being set free I've told you have been here since morning praying in the city for this very moment that we are, we are embarking on. Be ready to receive and the spirit of God is here to divide the word of truth for you. You receive your portion, you get blessed and all the glory goes back to God. I thank God because of my brothers Pastor Harrison and Pastor Johnston, they are here also to assist us, to help us reach somewhere. I know the cry of many. When I look at the comments today, many people are saying, Sister Mary, pray for me. I, I, want to, I need a job in life. I'm experiencing the spirit of confusion with the conmans all the time. You're meeting conmen on your way. It is taking you backward. It is pulling you back. And you need to go forward. So all these spirits, we are tackling them here. They need, have to live your life. You need to live a free life in Christ Jesus. So I thank God because of you. You have taken your time your money, your life to listen to us. We have our number there. And I know that through that number, if you have any question, any prayer request, I thank God for those who have already sent their prayer requests. We are going to pray. And we have all again prayed. We have prayed and we are going again to pray. I know God is going to do something in your life. I welcome my guests today. May God use you, mighty men of God, mighty men of valor. May God use you to save this generation. This is a generation that needs God, needs Jesus Christ. 
Christ who brought salvation. These are generations that need salvation. Many people have been running from house to house, from here and there, seeking for help. I thank God because of these men of God. They are here to answer some of our questions that we have in life. May God bless you as you share, share, share with somebody and tag your friends. Let's watch together. Let's, let's receive together. Let's be set free. Be happy when someone also is happy. Rejoice to see a life being saved. Share with somebody and God is going to bless you. So I welcome, men, I welcome you men of God. Introduce yourselves. Then later, later on, we will welcome the servant of God to give us the word of God tonight. It is a night of freedom. God bless you so much. Welcome, men of God. Amen. Asante sana. Inai tutasama. Tunasema karibu tena katika vituwa vietu hivi. Tuungane pamoja ili tukabarikiwe juni ya leo. Majina yangu naitua Johnston tena. Karibu sana. I'm Sir Harrison Adea. I take this opportunity to welcome you all. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you can just give us a moment of time so that we can share the word of God together. And I believe that everything that God is going to do is going to change your life. It's going to become a blessing in your life. Thank you very much as you prepare to listen to the word. Amen. Amen. Thanks a lot. I thank God because I can see people are viewing us, people are watching. And already I can see comments here. People are tuned in. God bless you more. My sister, Candy. Nilam, God bless you. My sister, Bena, you are a great woman of God. God bless you so much. I can see you are connected. May God give you the answers of your prayers today. Let this night be a night of turn around in your life. So I take this opportunity once more again to welcome the servant of God, Pastor Harrison, to take us over again and to pray against this spirit of reversion sin in life. It has broken the lives of many and we are putting a stop in it. No more reversion sin again in your life. In Jesus' name. Welcome, servant of God. Thank you very much. Again, I take this opportunity to welcome you. Thank you so much for your time, your commitment, your prayers. It's what keeps us going. That's why we are here today, so that we can also share. Last week, uh, we were talking about reversionism. And that is why we are making a continuation of it today. I said, if you are not going forward, then you are going backward. And so I said, the, 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 the reaction, we also saw the reaction of those people in revisionism how they react and how, the, how they look at things and so we are uh, I want to read the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 4 from uh, verse 1 and 2 and verse 3 and then verse 4. He says, The Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such a teaching comes through hypo uh, hypocritical liars who con uh, conscious have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them 
to ob uh, abst abstain from certain food which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Verse 5, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. So these are words of Apostle Paul. He's giving instruction to Timothy, his son, about the things that he need to expect from the latter times. He's saying to Timothy, in latter times, some, he says, some will abandon. Not all, but some will abandon. Not everybody will abandon the faith. imani. And now I want you to see the, the, the reversionism here. These are the people that received faith by believing Christ Jesus. But again in the process of second phase of salvation. They abandoned the faith. They forsake. They leave faith. They stop living as people of faith. They stop confessing the faith. And he says they shall follow the deceiving spirit. Deceiving spirit and things taught by demons. Why are people uh, uh, experiencing reversionism? Our faith is not baseless. Of the object of our faith is the word of God. Our faith is centered in Christ Jesus. And that is why Paul is reminding Timothy that when somebody abandons the faith, the true faith of Christ, then he's going to have faith in something else. Is your faith in God or, uh, or in Jesus or is your faith in something else? Are you a follower of Jesus or you are following deceiving spirits? So many people have deceived people in the name of the servants of God when they are not. Some gives false prophets. Some says God has said when he has not said something. That is the deception of this spirit. My Bible uses the word spirits. Bible yangu tafsiri yangu inasema inatumia neno roho. The spirits zile roho that are going to deceive many. Ambazo zinakwenda kuwadanganya wengi. Why are the people being deceived? Kwa nini watu wanadanganywa? A person who is living under reversionism will not be patient to wait upon the Lord. Mtu ambaye anaishi katika maisha kubadilika hata kwa mvumilifu na kumngoja Mungu. He is going to try all means so that he can come up with a solution to his problem. Anaenda kujaribu vitu vingi ili akuje na apate suluhu ya shida yake. And through that mixing himself is going to listen to so many voices of deception. So Paul is saying and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. What are the teachings that you are receiving? Are they the 
teaching of the Christ or the teaching of demons. Je, ni mafundisho ya Kristo ama ni mafundisho ya kimapepo? A person of revisionism has deserted the true teaching of the Messiah and is following the teachings of deception. Na mtu ambaye ako katika roho ya ubadilishaji basi ameiachilia, uh, ameacha ukweli na mafundisho ya Kristo na amefuata uh, roho ya uongo na mafundisho ya kimapepo. And apostle is saying verse to such teaching comes through hypocritical liars. Na Paulo anasema hapa na mafundisho ya kama haya yanakuja kupitia katika wale wanafiki wa uongo. The the the, the, high, uh, the, the, the hypocrites. Wale wenye unafiki. The word hypocrites means somebody pretending to be what he is not. Uh, neno unafiki pale inaelezea mtu kujifanya yeye ni nani wakati yeye si mtu wa aina hiyo. This deception spirit is working inside those people who pretend to be pastor and they are not been called with with God. Hii roho ya ubadilishaji inafanya asa kwa watu wale ambao wanajifanya wachungaji wakati wao hawajaitwa na Mungu mwenyewe. And their conscience has been seared with hot iron. Na na na, na mtasamo wao ume unaenda una, kukutana na na kisu ama chuma lenye makali their conscience damira yao imekufa ganze their conscience is uh, shared with hot iron basi damira yao imekwisha kukufa ganzi they forbid people to marry and order them to or abstain from certain foods na wanawashawishi <laughs> watu wasiowe na waache kutumia baadhi ya vyakula and they believe when you are not eating this food you are holy na wanaamini unapokosa kutumia baadhi ya vyakula basi hapo ndipo unatunza utakatifu some are told you don't need even to get married you can just be holy and finally they find themselves sinning and having these sexual sins na wengine wanashawishiwa wasiowe na baadaye wanajikuta wanatenda dhambi na wanajikuta katika swala hili la utendaji uh, sina bila 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 ufahamu if you have weak faith in eating some certain foods unapojipata kuwa na imani dogo ya kukula baadhi ya vyakula then don't eat it basi usikule but, but when you have strong faith in eating food you eat it na ukiwa na imani kubwa ya kula hizi vyakula we kula so you should not stop eating certain foods because somebody told you when you eat this you are not holy and when you eat this you are not holy hatupasi kuacha kutumia baadhi ya vyakula kwa sababu mtu alikuambia unapokula hii unanajisika una, una na unapokula hii unakuwa mtakatifu some have been told don't eat meat on friday wengine wamwambia msile nyama siku ya ijumaa some have been told don't eat fish on sunday wengine wamwambia usikule samaki jumapili because it's going to defile you maana itakunajisi that is not the truth wao si ukweli so this uh, Paul is saying Paulo anasema, that there will be people who will abandon this faith we are talking about uh, kwamba watakuwa ni watu watakao acha huu kweli tunaozungumzia revisionism is abandoning the true faith ah uh, ubadilishaji ni kule kuacha imani ya kweli the faith that brought salvation inside you imani iliyoleta uokovu ndani yako revisionism is forsaking the true teaching and following the the deception the the false teaching uh, ubadilishaji ni kuacha mafundisho ya kweli na kufuata mafundisho ya uongo and then you start clinging upon the teaching that are wrong na kisha baadaye unakuwa mtu wa kufuatilia mafundisho yaliyo mabovu you start creating for yourself some beliefs unaanza kujitengenezea imani yako that can support your backsliding ambayo inaweza kukutia moyo wakati unarudi nyuma kwa uokovu so what happens to a believer who is intensifying in this kind of sin ah ni nini nafanyika kwa muumini anayejihusisha kwa aina hii ya dhambi now listen to what the bible says sasa sikiza kile biblia inasema john first john chapter number 5 waraka wa kwanza wa yohana mlango watano chapter number 5 uh, mlango wa tano and verse 16 uh, waraka wa kwanza wa yohana mlango wa tano mstari wa 16 he says anasema if anyone sees his brother commit a sin 
Yeyote yule anapoona ndugu yake anajihusisha kwa dhambi that does not lead to death. Ambayo haimwelekezi kwa mauti. He should pray and God will give him life. Anapaswa kuomba naye Mungu atampatia uhai. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. Ah nina wapeleka nina na wale watendao dhambi dhambi isiwapeleka kwenye mauti. I refer to those Nina waelekezwa kwa wale. There is a sin that leads to death. Kuwa na dhambi ambayo inaongozwa kwenye kwenye mauti. There is a sin that leads to death. Kuna dhambi inayoelekeza mtu katika mauti. I am not saying that he should pray about that. Asisemi aombe kuhusu hiyo. All wrong doing is sin. Basi matendo yote mabaya ni dhambi. And there is sin that does not lead to death. Na kunayo aina ya dhambi isiyoelekeza kwa kifo. Now what is John speaking about here? Basi Yohana anajaribu kusema nini hapa? Reversionism is a person who is living inside sin. Uh, ubadilishaji ni mtu anayeishi ndani ya dhambi. But uh, I want you to see the the, the 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 explanation here. Lakini nataka uone maelezo hapa. John is saying there is sin that does not lead to death. Ah uh, Yohana anasema kuna dhambi isiyoweza kukuelekeza kwenye mauti. And there is sin that leads you to death. Na kuna yale maofu yanayokuelekeza katika kifo ama mauti. So what is this sin that does not lead you to death? Basi hii aina ya maofu isiyokuelekeza kwa mauti ni yapi? When you realize that you have committed sin, unapojitambua umeasi and have that acknowledgement of that sin by using the cross of Jesus. Na upate ufahamu wa hiyo dhambi kwa kutumia msalaba wa Yesu. Because on the cross Jesus has already paid for that sin. Maana kwenye msalaba Yesu amelipia dhambi zote. And so sin should not be a, a, a something that hinders you to enjoy fellowship with God. Basi dhambi isiwe kitu cha kukuzuia wewe kufanya ushirika ama kufurahia ushirika na Mungu. And again I'm not permitting you to sin because you can still use the cross and have fellowship. Na pia tena sikuruhusu ufanye dhambi ni kwa sababu utaenda kwa msalaba na ufanye ushirika na Mungu. He says if anyone sees his brother commit a sin. Anasema yeyote yule atakapomwona ndugu yake akitenda dhambi that does not lead to death. Ambayo haimuelekezi kwenye mauti. When you commit sin you die. Unapotenda dhambi unakufa. You have vacated from life into death. Umehama kutoka katika uzima hadi kwenye mauti. And so when you realize that sin, na unapotambua hiyo dhambi, and acknowledge it before the Lord by confessing, na uipeleke mbele za Bwana kwa kukiri dhambi hiyo, and repent before the Almighty God. Na kutubu mbele za Bwana mkuu. That sin is going to be forgiven and it's not going to lead you to death. Na basi hiyo dhambi inakwenda kusemehewa na haitakuelekeza kwenye mauti. You will be restored back to life again. Utarejeshwa kwa uzima tena. But what is the sin that leads to death? Lakini dhambi inayokuelekeza kwenye mauti ni ipi? It is a believer who is living in reversionism. Ni muumini anayeishi katika mabadiliko. Who has rejected God's provision of forgiveness? Ambaye amekataa upeanaji wa msamaha wa Mungu. He has rejected the the, the rebuke of God. Amekataa kukemewa kwa Mungu. He has rejected the restoration of God. Amekataa urejesho wa Mungu. And he's now living as a worldly person. Na sasa anaishi kama mtu wa udunia. There is nothing that God is going to do for that person because he has refused the forgiveness of his sin. Hapana chochote Mungu aweza kufanya juu ya mtu huyo maana amekaa na msamaha wa dhambi. He is going to intensify living in that sin. Basi anaenda kukubaliana na ku katika ile dhambi that sin will person into death na hiyo dhambi itamwelekeza mtu huyo that is the sin that brings death to that person hiyo ndio dhambi inayoleta mauti kwa mtu wa namna hiyo he die because because that uh, not because that god is not able to save him 
anakufa si kwa sababu Mungu hana uwezo wa kumuokoa not that that sin cannot be forgiven sio kwamba hiyo dhambi Mungu hawezi kuisamehe but he has rejected God's provision lakini amekataa upeanaji wa Mungu God through his justice has provided a way of dealing with human sin Mungu kupitia uhaki wake amepeana njia ya kukabiliana na dhambi in a right way without violating his justice and righteousness uh, katika njia ama mbinu nzuri ambayo haiwezi enda kinyume na uhaki wake That is why what the justice of God uh, uh, satisfies the, the, the righteousness of God blesses. Na ndio sababu uhaki wa Mungu unathibitisha what the justice of God kila, satisfies. Kila mbacho uhaki wa Mungu unathibitisha the righteousness of God blesses. Basi uhaki wa Mungu unabariki. And what the righteousness of God approves na kile ambacho uhaki wa Mungu unathibitisha the justice of God also blesses it na pia uhaki wa Mungu unabariki so God find a way of dealing with human sin without violating his standard of uh, righteousness basi Mungu akatafuta mbinu ya kukabiliana na dhambi bila kuharibiana na uhaki wake and that is why the standard of God can never be changed na ndio sababu viwango vya Mungu ama kiwango cha Mungu hakiwezi badilika you are either living by God's standard or by human standard ah, basi iwe unaishi katika ki wango cha Mungu ama katika viwango vya wanadamu You are either living by God's standard eh, uwe, uwe unaishi katika labda uwe unaishi katika viwango vya Mungu or you are living by human standard ama uwe unaishi katika viwango vya wanadamu A person who is living in revisionism and he has refused to be restored back to the fellowship mtu anayeishi katika roho hii ya ubadilishanaji na amekataa urejesho wa Mungu he is going to live in intensified a uh, discipline of god basi yeye anaenda kuishi kwa ghadhabu iliyotibitika na mungu the lord is going to intensify suffering upon this person so that he can remember and go back to him mungu anaenda kuachilia mateso juu ya mtu huyu ili huyu mtu apate ufahamu na mrejelee yeye but when he refuses to come back to himself and go back to the fellowship with god na pia anapofanya maamuzi ya kukataa kujirejelea na kumrejelea mungu mwenyewe his condition worsens hali ya mtu wa aina hiyo inakuwa mbaya zaidi it worsens every time inakuwa mbaya zaidi kila wakati because this person has separated himself from god maana mtu huyu amejitenga mwenyewe na Mungu in reversionism katika ubadilishanaji that is the stage where people have left god and they are seeking their personal happiness outside god basi hapo ndipo watu wanaacha raha ya Mungu na wanatafuta raha yao pale duniani so they feel like they need to go outside there and find outside their happiness wanakuwa na mawazo ya kusema twende pale nje na kule ndiko tutapata furaha so they forsake faith hivyo wanaiacha imani and they are lured with the desires of the world na wanajiingiza katika tamaa za dunia hoping that they are going to find some joy and peace outside there wakidania wanaenda kupata aina ya amani na furaha pale nje oh i've been praying and things have not been working au oh, tumekuwa tunaomba nimekuwa naomba vitu havija kwa vinafanyika sawa i've given everything to god and i can't see any change nimetoa vyote kwa mungu na sijaona mabadiliko i've done quite some things for the kingdom and nothing is changing in my life nimefanya mengi katika ufalme na hapana mabadiliko kwenye maisha yangu so let me try the other kind of life outside there basi wacha nijaribu aina nyingine ya maisha pale nje so they are looking for happiness outside there wanatafuta furaha pale 
inje. Chasing shadows and wind outside there. Wakifukuzana na kifuli na mawimbi pale inje. And they think that they are going to find happiness when they are not going to have it. Wakifikiria wanaenda kupata furaha wakati hawaendi kupata hiyo furaha. There is a time I was teaching about seekers and seekers. Ah kuna wakati nilikuwa na sungumza kuhusu wale wenye kunyakua na wale wenye kutafuta. We have the seekers of the kingdom. Na wale wanaotafuta ufalme. We have the seekers of the kingdom. Na wale wenye kutafuta ufalme. And we have the seekers. Na kuna tu wale wa kunyakua. Jesus said, Yesu akasema, Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood. Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu. By the time Jesus was saying that, Wakati Yesu alikuwa anasema haya, He had discovered that so many people are not following him because of the word. Alitambua kwamba watu wengi hawamfuati kwa sababu ya neno. They were following him because of the bread and fish they had eaten. Walimfuata kwa sababu ya mkate na samaki walizokuwa wamekula. Not so many people uh, go to churches because they want to follow Christ. Si wengi wanaoenda kanisani wanamfuata Kristo. Some are going there because they want good job. Wengine wanakwenda kanisani maana wanataka kazi nzuri. And they stay in church without having good job and they feel so frustrated again they change the church. Na wanakwenda kanisani wanakaa kule wakika muda mrefu bila kupata kazi wanahama wanaenda kanisa nyingine. Then you go to another church and you are not getting a job you change another church. Sasa unaenda kwa kanisa nyingine unakosa hiyo kazi unabadili kanisa lingine. After going through all this scenario you become bitter with all churches and you think the churches are the one giving you the job. Baada ya kupita mapito haya kwenda kanisa baada ya nyingine unachukia makanisa uh, kwa sababu kanisa umekuwa pale na hujapata kazi. What are you seeking? Unatafuta nini? A true believer is a person who seeks the kingdom of God. Muumini wa kweli ni yule anayetafuta ufalme wa Mungu. And all these things shall be added unto him. Na haya mengine yote yatazidishiwa. But when Jesus saw that these people are just seeking him because of bread and the fish. Na Yesu alipoona watu hao wanamfuata kwa sababu ya samaki na mkate. He stopped give, uh, giving them milk and started giving them bones uh, bones na alikoma kuwapatieni maziwa akaanza kuwapatia mifupa so that he can test their faith and know the reason why they are following him ili akaweze kupima imani yao na kujua sababu inayowafanya kumfuata the very day he spoken about eating his flesh and drinking his blood siku ile aliyokuwa anazungumza kuhusu kukula mwili wake na pia kunywa damu yake that is the day he lost a, a crowd of people Basiondo siku alipotesa umati wa watu because he started teaching them the deep things of the kingdom Maana alianza kufundisha vitu vya kiundani vya kiufalme The true servants and pastors of God wa, wachungaji na watumishi wa Mungu wa kweli Those people who have stick to the true doctrine of teaching wale ambao wameshingatia mafundisho ya kweli They have lost quite some number because they seem like they don't have miracle signs and wonders wamekosa waumini wengi ni kwa sababu wanaonekana hawana uh, ile 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 kipawa cha kutenda miujiza na maajabu apostle is telling timothy in the last day when those who have abandoned the faith they will follow the deceiving spirits uh, mtume anamwambia timothy kwamba siku hizo zinakuja watakao iacha imani watafuata zile roho za uongo the people are not looking for the truth Watu hawatafuti ukweli. They are chasing miracles everywhere. Wanafukuzana na miujiza kila mahali. Changing the churches like cloth every week. Wakibadilisha makanisa kama mavasi kila juma. They go to every services hoping that they are going to receive when they are going to be deceived. Wanakwenda kwenye ibada zilizo tofauti wakitarajia kupokea na kumendoa na enda kudanganywa. And that deception has crippled the growth of the body of Christ everywhere. Na hiyo u- ule uongo umedanganya ama umeposa mwili wa Kristo kila mahali A person with revisionism is now looking for something that can please him not God Basi mtu wa roho ya ubadilishanaji anatafuta kitu kitakachompendeza yeye lakini si kumpendeza Mungu Now when Jesus looked at these people and the congregation Yesu alipotisama watu hawa na umati Because he knew their hearts 
analijua mio zao. Said if you want to follow me. Akasema mkitaka nifuata mimi. You will eat my flesh. Mtakula mwili wangu. And drink my blood. Na kunywa damu yangu. They said that cannot happen. Wakasema hiyo haitafanyika. The true teaching of the Messiah. Mafundisho ya kweli ya Mesia. The people of revisionism are running everywhere. Watu wa ubadilishanaji wanakimbia kila maeneo. They are looking for help. Wanatafuta msaada. They are looking for miracles. Wanatafuta miujiza. They are chasing signs and wonders without knowing the giver of signs and wonders. Wanatafuta miujiza na na, na maajabu bila kufahamu mwenye kupeana miujiza. And because the enemy knows that. Na kwa sababu adui ana huo ufahamu. He has raised the false priests. Ameinua makuhani wa ongo. He has raised the false prophets. Ameinua manabii wa ongo. To deceive them until the end. Wa but the voice of God is still speaking. God is still communicating his truth. Those who want to follow God. They can detect the voice of deception. And say no to that voice. And follow the voice of God. Paul is telling Timothy. I want you to be careful. Because these people will come with such a kinds of teachings. They will use persuasive language to lure many to their teachings. Be very sensitive. Because they are going to deceive many. And many are going to follow them. And because of reversionism Most of the people have been deceived They have been lured to this category They are using a lot of money To invest in false hope kuegeza katika tumaini ya uongo that will never result into anything ambaye haiwezi leta matokeo yoyote finally somebody becomes so angry hatimaye mtu anakuwa mtu wa hasira and he says na anasema Pastors are liars. Wachungaji ni waongo. Oh pastors have deceived me. Ah wachungaji wamenidanganya. Who are you following? Wewe unamfuata nani? Who are you following today? Wewe unamfuata nani leo? Paul says they will be followers of false spirits. Basi Paulo anasema watakuwa wafuataji wa wa wa, wa roho za uongo. Some Wengine, si wote. But not all of them. Si wote. Those who knows their God. Wale wa wao, mungu wao. They will know the voice of their God. Watajua sauti ya mungu yao. When reversionism comes. Wakati ubadilishanaji unakuja. They will stick to the faith. Watasingatia imani. They will defend their faith. Wataitetea imani. They will prove that they were saved by that faith of God. Watatibitisha kwamba waliokolewa na hiyo imani ya mungu. But those who are forsaken and faith na wale wanaoiacha imani they are going to face a lot wanakwenda kupitia mengi they are going to encounter problems after problems wanakwenda kupitia shida baada ya shida because they have forsaken the one who can help them maana wameacha yule anayeweza kuwasaidia and a person with reversionism mtu na ile roho ya 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 ubadilishanaji he develops the heart that is hardened yeye hukusha roho ambayo ni gumu sana the person with the heart the, the, the heart that can never be changed mtu aliye na moyo usioweza kubadilika the heart of the rock roho ya mawe so that the enemy can use that heart to mislead it and to take it to hell ili shetani adui atumie huyo uh, huo moyo amshawishi kuingia uh, kushimu let me say this when we talk about reversionism naposumzu kuhusu ubadilishaji i am talking about a believer nasumza kuhusu muumini who has stopped growing yule ambaye amekoma kukua has stopped having faith in god amekoma kuwa na imani kwa mungu he has stopped uh, having the love of god amekoma kuwa na upendo wa mungu and now he has changed 
changed himself to be transformed to the world again. Basi amefanya maamuzi ya kubadilika na kufananishwa na dunia tena. His heart has been hardened. Moyo wake umefanyika mgumu. Even if the voice of God comes to him, hata sauti ya Mungu inapomkujilia, he will not accept that voice. Basi hata kubaliana na hiyo sauti. Even if God is standing at the door knocking, hata Mungu akisimama malangoni akibisha, he will not open so that the Lord can dine with that person. Basi hataweza mfungulia ili Mungu aketi na yeye na wale pamoja. Some people thinks Watu wengine ufikiria. The problem they are going through is because God Shida wanazopitia ni kwa sababu Mungu has forsaken them. Amewasahau. No. Hapana. Maybe you are living in reversionism. Labda unaishi katika roho ya kubadilika. You backslidden. Ulirudi nyuma. You are mixed with the world. Umejichanganya na dunia. You have compromised your faith. Umekubaliana na imani. Maybe that problem or that condition you are in is as a result of God's discipline. Labda hiyo shida uliyo ndani yake ni matokeo ya ghadhabu ya Mungu. You need to understand the discipline of God and the trials. Unahitaji kutambua ghadhabu ya Mungu ama ama ni damu ya Mungu na majaribu. So that you can distinguish the two. Ili uweze kubadilisha kutofautisha hiyo ayo mawili. Am I going through this as a discipline of God or as a person who has trusted God and by because of my faith in God. Ah, uh, ninapitia haya kwa sababu ya nidamu ya Mungu kama mtu ambaye nimemtumainia Mungu na kuwa na imani kwa Mungu. Don't just comfort yourself that maybe oh maybe I'm going through this because I'm a believer when you are not right with God. Usijitie tu moyo kwamba napitia haya kwa sababu mimi ni muumini na wakati uh, unapitia haya wa, ukiwa haupo sawa na Mungu. So the people who are under reversionism there is still an opportunity for them. Kuna watu ambao wangali katika roho ya ubadilishanaji bado kuna nafasi ya Mungu kwao. When they acknowledge that sin that has thrown them back to the flesh, God is faithful and just to forgive them. Mungu anawasamehe wanapoirusha hiyo roho wanapoachana na hiyo roho na wamrudie Mungu. God has not stopped loving you. Mungu hajakoma kukupenda. His love is perfect. Upendo wake ni kamili. Bible says the perfect love of God drives away fear. Ha, Biblia inasema kwamba upendo wa Mungu wa kweli inaondosha ina ondoa uoga Don't let that sin lead you to death. Basi usiruhusu hiyo dhambi kuelekeze kwa mauti. But when you confess of that sin, na unapokiri dhambi hiyo, the Lord is able to forgive you. Bwana ana uweza wa kukusamehe. Some people ran away from the church. Watu wengine walitoroka kutoka kanisani because of wrong things they did. Kwa sababu ya vitu vibaya walivyofanya. And they changed even other they changed and went to another church. Na wakafa Changing the church without confessing the sin does not help you. Basi kubadilisha kanisa bila kuziungama dhambi zako haiwezi kukusaidia. Even if you change all the churches in Kenya, you will still be needed to repent. Hata ukibadilisha makanisa yote umalize nchini Kenya unahitaji kutubu. When you confess of that sin, unapokiri hiyo dhambi and accept to be transformed. Na ukubali kubadilisha The Lord is faithful and just to forgive you. Mungu ni mwaminifu na mwenye haki kukubadilisha. Stop living in reversionism. Kwa kuishi katika maisha ya kubadilishaji. We still have a way of God restoring you back. Bado pana njia ya Mungu kukurejesha. Don't harden your heart when you hear this voice. Usifanye moyo wako mpendwa kuwa mgumu unaposikia sauti hii. The author of the Hebrew says when you hear the voice of God do not harden your heart. Mwandishi wa Hebrania anasema unaposikia sauti ya Mungu sifanye moyo wako kuwa mgumu So don't harden your heart because of some some things that happened to you Basi usifanye moyo wako kuwa mgumu kwa sababu ya baadhi ya vitu zilizokufanyikia Some left the church because they were wrong Wengine waliacha kanisa kwa sababu walikosewa Because so and so never recommended well about you Kwa sababu fulani na fulani hawakusema vizuri kwako Because so and so never saw my effort and he never praised me Kwamba fulani na fulani hako kuna bidii yangu na kisha anipongeze Paul is saying the book of Galatians Paul anasema kwa kitabu cha Wagalatia Chapter 1 from verse
verse 11 mlango ule wa kwanza mstari wa 11 am i again seeking human approval basi je ninatafuta uh, utibitisho wa wanadamu you are not serving god to be approved by men ah basi haumtumiki mungu kutibitishwa na wanaume it is only god who can approve you ni mungu tu ndiye anaweza tibitisha so don't look the approval of men men will always disapprove you basi usingoje wanadamu wa kutibitisha kwamba unafanya kazi ni Mungu tu ndiye anaweza fanya hiyo. And because they failed to approve you, you decided now to desert faith and to stay at home. Na sasa kwa vile huku pongezwa kwa kazi hiyo ukaamua kuacha imani na kuketi nyumbani. Now you don't want to have fellowship with other brothers. Ukaacha kufanya ushirika na wapendwa wengine. I am calling upon you today. Na kuita leo mpendo. Come out of that spirit of revisionism. Toka katika hiyo roho ya ubadilishanaji. Get back into the church. Rejea kanisani. A church is not a place of uh, uh, of perfect people. Basi kanisa si mahala pa watu wakamilifu. It is a place of imperfect people being perfected by the perfect God. Basi ni mahala pa watu wasio wakamilifu wanaokamilishwa na Mungu mkamilifu. So that we can all attain the maturity of God. Ili wote tukafikie ukomafu wa Mungu. That is why we are here to tell you. Na ndo sababu tuko hapa tukuambie. You stopped the ministry. Uliacha huduma. You stopped walking with the with the Lord. Ukaacha kutembea na Mungu. You stopped doing the right thing. Ukaacha kufanya kitu kinacho kinachofaa. Because of your own reasons. Kwa sababu ya sababu zako. We are appealing to you through the word of the Lord. Basi twakuomba leo kupitia neno la Mungu. Come out of that reversion is. Toka katika ubadilishanaji. Don't lie to yourself. Usijidanganye. That you are going to have peace outside there. Kwamba utapata amani pale nje. That you are going to have happiness outside there. Utapata uh, uh, furaha pale nje there is happiness in jesus pana furaha kwa yesu bible says come and test and see biblia nasema njoo ujaribu na uone and since you came and tested the goodness of god na kwa vile ulikuja na kujaribu wema wa mungu it will never fade away basi haitaisha haitakondokea he is still good bado ni njema and he is still good forever na angali ni mwema milele outside there everything is appealing to be so good kila kitu pale nje kinaonekana kuwa nzuri and you live in reversionism na unaishi katika ubadilishanaji but the enemy is taking that opportunity lakini naye adui anachukua fursa hiyo to make you delay in sin kukufanya kuchelewa kwenye dhambi so that you should not enjoy the benefit as a child of god ili usifurahikie faida kama mwana wa mungu we have the benefits of walking with god pana faida za wewe kutembea na mungu we have the benefits of having fellowship with God. Pana faida ya sisi kuwa na ushirika na Mungu. We have things that you enjoy when you are right with God. Kuna vitu ambavyo unafurahikia unapokuwa sawa na Mungu. And so when you are not right with him. Na unapokosa kuwa sawa na Mungu. The enemy is so happy because you have lost a lot of things. Basi adui anafurahikia maana umepotesa vingi. You are losing and not gaining. Unapotesa na hufaidiki. If Satan cannot kill you. Kama adui hawezi kukua. He will come with the tactics of hindering you from enjoying what you are supposed to be enjoying by as a child of God. Atakuja na namna mbinu za kukusuia kufurahia vile unapaswa kufurahia kama mwana wa Mungu. If he cannot take away the salvation that you have, kama hawezi kuchukua wokovu uliyonao, he is going to make you live as a person who will never enjoy this the blessings of salvation. Atakufanya wewe kuishi kama mtu ambaye hujawahi furahikia neema ya ama baraka za uokovu. And that is reversionism. Na hiyo ni kubadilika. Satan is causing people to live in reversionism so that they cannot enjoy what they were meant to enjoy. Satani anawasababisha watu kubadilika ili wasifurahie kile wamekusudia ama Mungu amekusudia wafurahikie. And he causes so many people to live the life that God never meant them to live. Na wafanya wengi kuishi maisha ambayo Mungu hakukusudia waishi maisha ina hiyo. Because of the reversion is. sababu ya ya ubadilishanaji. Make up your mind today. Basi tengeneza mawazo yako leo. Come out of that reversionism. Toka katika kubadilika. Allow to be restored back. Jikubalie kurejesha. Use the cross of Jesus. Mia msalaba wa Yesu. Cause by uh, on the cross he paid every sin. Mana pale msalabani alilipia dhambi zote. When you acknowledge that 
sin by using the cross. Unapotambua hiyo dhambi kwa kutumia msalaba. He is faithful and just to forgive you. Yeye ni mwaminifu na mwenye haki kukusamehe. When he forgives your sin he forgets. Anaposamehe dhambi zako anasahau. He is going to make you righteous again. Atakufanya mwenye haki tena. Don't live in revisionism and build your human righteousness. Na usisi katika kubadilika na kujenga uhaki wako kama mwanadamu. The human righteousness does not meet the standard of God. Basi uhaki wa wanadamu hauwezi kutanika na uhaki wa Mungu. Because those who live in human righteousness, maana wanaoishi katika uhaki wa wanadamu, they start comparing themselves with other people. Wanaanza kujilinganisha na watu wengine. And they say, na wanasema, my sin is better than the sin of that guy. Dhambi zangu ni bora kuliko ama ni kidogo kuliko za huyu mwingine. No, no, my sin is only lying, but that person has fornicated. Na, na wanasema dhambi zangu ni ku, ni uongo tu na mtu yule amethenda usharati. So he justifies himself through the self righteousness and tend to think he is better than another person. Kwa hivyo anajijenga mwenyewe na hivyo anakuwa na mawazo ya kuona heri yeye ni bora kuliko yule mwingine. So reversion is makes you feel that you are better than another person. Basi ubadilishanaji unakufanya wewe kujiona wewe ni bora kuliko mwingine. No you are not better than that person. Hapana wewe si bora kama mtu yule mwingine. You are evil like that person. Wewe ni mwofu kama yule mwingine. So don't just for your sins. Basi usiji usi usijenge dhambi zako usifanye kuwa haki. Confess them and God will forgive you. Fikiri naye Mungu ataweza kusamehe. There is still a way. Bado pana njia. Where seems to be no way. Ambako panaonekana hapana njia. Thank you very much for listening. Asante kwa kutusikiza. God bless you so much. Bwana akubariki sana. As you meditate and make the right decision of coming back to God. Unapotafakari na kufanya maamusi yaliyo bora ya kurejea tena kwa Mungu. Shalom. Amani. Hey. Praise the Lord. The field is coming hot and hotter. Praise the Lord. I believe you have hearkened unto the voice of the servant of God. Hallelujah. You have hearkened unto the voice of the servant of God. It is not in vain. It is not in vain, my sister, my brother, you who is seated there listening for these powerful words. I can see people are commenting and saying it is very powerful. It is powerful. I believe you're receiving something. Your inner man is being changed. It's being renewed. Do not allow the glittering of the world of the world sway away your faith from God. Do not allow it. Do not permit it. My God, my God. We are living into a deceptive world where many are deceived. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help me and save me. Save my generation. Save my people. My people perish for lack of knowledge. God, give me knowledge. I want to be saved. Give me knowledge. I need blessings. Yes, who is the blessed man? Let me not be deceived. How can I be blessed? God, give me knowledge to understand your blessings. Give me knowledge to understand how you bless people. God, hey, that is my prayer. That is my prayer, my sister, today. That you are not going to be deceived. That you, your faith in Christ, your faith in the Lord, is going to remain still. May your house be built in, in the, in, unto the rock, who is Jesus Christ. On the rock, Jesus Christ. When Hannah stayed and saw everything, the mockery of Penina, Later on, she said, you are the lifter of my home. You are the lifter of my head. Hey, thank you, Jesus Christ. God is not a man that he should lie. Mm. He is not a son of man that he should speak lies. 
He has no room for repentance. A. But he gives us room to repent our sins and come back to him. He is God. His word is sure. His word is proven before he comes to you. The Bible says he watches over his word to see it fulfilled. Ah. He's not a man that he speaks void words. When I study the book of Jeremiah, he tells me, I am a God of flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I say, nothing is too hard for you. If it's blessing God, you are the owner of blessings. Silver and gold belongs to you. What is it that I need? My sister, what is it that you need? God is, is saying, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Oh my God. Thank you, man of God. God bless you. I'm feeling revival in my heart. I'm feeling being revived. And I know that my sister, my brother, wherever you are, you are feeling inside your heart. You are being revived. You are being renewed. Be renewed. And by the renewal of your mind, you are not going to remain the same. Hallelujah. Many people have sent prayer requests, man of God. Many, many people have sent their prayer requests here. I don't know if I'm going to read all of them. There are so many. There are too much. Hey. People are passing through a lot. In many hearts, many souls, many spirits need to be revived. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Prayer requests. Oh, hallelujah. I believe that we have prayed since morning and these prayer requests some of them we handled them and we know that god is working out the answer you just wait wait and wait don't run here and there do not go on blaming people for your unanswered prayers as the man of god have told us mm. Christabel Cherop, you are saying pray for spirit of confusion with unknown con men. Oh, this sister is being followed with unknown con men. Gladys Makove, you are saying pray for sickness of arthritis for 20 years. You need to be delivered, my sister. 20 years. Oh, my God. 20 years. You need God to deliver you. And today, I believe that deliverance is on your way in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Bindi Velma Omwaka, you are saying, pray, amen. Pray for me to get a job and intercede, interceding giftings. Hallelujah. I believe that the man of God is here to pray with us tonight. Mary Auma, you are saying, we pray for job and financial problems. You need a breakthrough financially. Hilda Achieng, amen, sister Mary, pray for me. Breakthrough, you need a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough. Helen Wafula, pray for me to grow spiritually. Hallelujah. God is taking you higher, my sister, tonight. Hallelujah. Omutecho, you are saying, pray for me and my family. We are passing in ups and downs. They are passing through ups and downs. Men of God need God. And I know that these are the things that are causing people to run. To, to move from one place to another. Seeking for help. Oh God, help your people. Help us, my God. Helen, super girl, you are saying pray with you. We pray with you at your workplace. Distance is not a barrier. Helen, you are our sister. We love you. God is with you. May you receive your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Sabina Ondeche. Pray for breakthrough. Violet Kageha unasema mini ombe. Maisha yangu yalifungwa. Mungu akapate kukufungua. 
siku ya leo. Haleluya. Na brother Patrick unasema ya kwamba praying with you from Kakamega Pastor Patrick. Patrick is a pastor. Our friend pastor. May God bless you. Na naamini ya kwamba kuna maombi mengi sana yale ambao watu wametumana wanatamani sana ya kwamba waombewe waombewe tusimame pamoja nao katika maombi ya siku ya leo na ninajua Mungu yuko pamoja na wewe mpendwa wacha kukimbia huku na huku weka imani yako katika Kristo soma neno la Bwana lielewe vizuri sana maana nasema tunaangamia kwa kukosa maarifa ambia Bwana nipatie maarifa ya kile kitu ambacho ninatamani ili niache kukimbia huku na huku Bwana Hmm. Hallelujah. We are still receiving comments. Comments. Send your prayer request. Send your prayer request. Send your prayer request. And I believe that God is here today to answer your prayer. His hand is not shortened. His ear is not dumb that he cannot hear or listen to your cry. Oh our sins have made a wall between us and our God. And I know that tonight, through self-acceptance, you're, you're going to receive to be delivered from that spirit. God is going to deliver you. Hallelujah. So, man of God, these are the prayer requests that people have. That people have. And I know that many other people also send their prayer requests through our our prayer line and I believe that all those prayers we have prayed for them but still the men of God in the studio in our studios today are going again to pray until we see something tangible unto our lives we are going to push to pray until something happens Hatuta choka kuomba mpendwa. Baka tuone kitu kimetendeka katika maisha yako. Haleluya. Na tutaomba kwa sababu maombi kwa mungu ni bure. Tulipewa na fasi ya kuomba na wateule wa mungu. Biblia inasema ombeni chochote mtakacho kwa jina langu. Ask anything you want in my name. If anyone. Haijaeka vikwazo ya kwamba kama watumishi, wachungaji, ama waimbaji, ama wainjilisti, ama waombezi. Biblia inasema iwapo mtu yeyote. Na njia tuliyopewa ni jina la Yesu Kristo pekee. Na kwa damu yake Biblia inasema sisi tumeshinda. Huyu mshtaki wa wandugu, huyu mshtaki anayepeleka mashtaka yetu mbinguni, ata vile wakati ambapo alirushwa duniani, bado Yesu Kristo alifuatilia na akasema ni kwa damu yangu nyinyi ni washindi. We are made more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus Christ. Kwa hivyo usiogope. Ya kwamba kuna mtu anaweza kusimama mbele za Mungu na kuzuilia ya kwamba hujatoa sadaka ya namna hii. Wacha nikwambie vile tumefundishwa na mtumishi wa Mungu, anasema usifuatilie yale maubiri ambao ni ya uongo ya kukupotosha. Sadaka inayokuokoa na kukutetea kutokana na yale ambao unapitia ni damu ya Yesu. Ni damu ya Yesu. Ni damu ya Yesu, mpendwa ni damu ya Yesu nimesoma Biblia kuanzia mwanzo mpaka ufunuo. It's only the blood of Jesus. Maana damu ya wanyama haikuweza. Kuna mambo ambayo kwa kweli hata leo hii wangesema damu ya wanyama mimi sijavuga mbuzi hata mmoja. Ningeokolewa na nini? Lakini Mungu aliona ya kwamba kuna wala ambao hawatakuwa na uwezo wa kuvuga kondoo ama ngombe ama mbuzi akamtoa mwanae wa pekee Yesu Kristo na akasema yote yamekwisha. Iwapo tutakaa katika ukamilifu na kanuni za Mwenyezi Mungu. A, yesu Kristo damu yake tunapoiita itashinda kutoa na kutoa na kutoa na kutoa kila laana, kila madhabau, kila ngome zote ambazo zitakuwa zimewekwa karibu na sisi atazivunja kwa damu yake. Na tutamwabudu Mungu. Mahali ambapo fedha na dhahabu inakuja katika nyumba ya Bwana, worship the Lord with the all. 
your substances. Tutamwabudu Mungu mtu atakuwa na uhuru wa kutoa kwa sababu anajua ya kwamba kama Mungu ameniponya mbona nikatalie mali yangu na hii mali ni Mungu aliyenipatia ataipeana katika nyumba ya Bwana na itafanya kazi ya Mungu. Damu ya Yesu imetosha mpendwa. Na kufuata kanuni za Mungu imetosha. Kwa hivyo nataka kumkaribisha mtumishi wa Mungu. Kama uko na swali ambalo labda uko nalo ili ukapate kujibiwa na mtumishi wa Mungu jioni leo kama kuna swali ambalo linakusumbua tumebakisha dakika kama kumi hivi ili Mungu akapate kukusaidia swali lako likapate kujibiwa labda umekimbia umetoka hapa umeingia mpaka umejipata umeingia katika nyumba za waganga bila kujua kwa sababu unatafuta kusaidika roho wa Mungu yuko hapa watumishi wa Mungu wako hapa Mungu amewapaka mafuta Yesu Kristo mwenyewe akasema kwamba the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Is there anyone seeking for God to deliver him? Here today we are with the good tidings, with the good gospel for you who is seeking for deliverance, for God to deliver you. Hallelujah. If there is any question, just send it to our comments, send it to our prayer line and we are going to ask the man of God to answer you through the scripture because I know this is a man who answers by the scripture of God. We are not going to answer you according to our own knowledge. The Bible says lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge the Lord acknowledge the word acknowledge the word in all your ways i'm waiting for your questions hallelujah mtumishi wa mungu kabla sijapokea maswali kutoka kwa watu ningependa kuuliza maana najua kwamba kuna watu huko nje ah mtu ametembea mtu ametoka hapa na amefika hapa na amefika hapa na kuna jambo moja ambalo umesema kwamba hii roho ya reversion zimu. Inamfanya mtu kukosa hata kujiamini ye mwenyewe. Maana mawazo yake hayezi sikiza hata kila ambacho roho yake mwenyewe inamwambia. Amepokea mawaida kutoka kwa huyu, kutoka kwa huyu mpaka imemchanganya. Mm. Mtu anakoza kuwa na ule uvumilivu. Kumaanisha ya kwamba baraka za Mungu zinataka tuwe na uvumilivu ndani yetu wakati mwingine ndiposa tuzipate. Kwa, kwa hivyo ningependa ya kwamba kuna watu ambao nimepata kukutana na wao. Mtu amechanganyikiwa, umepokea mawaida kutoka kwa huyu, anakuambia jaribu hii. Hata mimi nilijaribu na iliweza umefika huku hata haujajaribu hiyo tena umepokea kutoka kwa mwingine ya kwamba jaribu hii na hakuna mtu huwa anasema ya kwamba jaribu huyu kama yeye hajapata suluhisho labda atakwambia kwamba jaribu hii nataka kujua mtumishi wa Mungu na pia wenzangu pia wapate kujua kwa sababu siku moja nilipokuwa naangalia ma nilipokuwa naangalia vile Mungu alikuwa anasaidia watumishi wake ama anawatumia vile alivyotumia Musa sio vile alivyotumia Harun vile alivyotumia Harun sio vile alivyotumia Walawi wengine wale sio vile alivyotumia Joshua tufanye nini mtumishi wa Mungu tupate kusaidika maana ninapokuja kwa huyu ndugu yangu ataniambia kwamba tumia hii maana mimi ilinisaidia kwa sababu ilimsaidia pia mimi itanisaidia amaniaje. Uh, a believer who has not been rooted to the word of God. Muumini ambaye hajaweza kujizama katika neno la Mungu. Is not that stable in mind in making the decisions. Uh, wakati mwingine hana ule uwezo wa kufanya maamuzi. A person who has not developed his heart, his spiritual growth inside himself mtu ambaye hajaweza ruhusu ukomafu wa kiroho ndani yake mwenyewe he is going to be toasted with all kinds of doctrine anaenda kuyumbishwa na kila aina ya mafundisho 
The Bible says, let the word of God dwell inside you richly so that you will not be tossed with all kinds of wind. And that is why when we are rooted with the word of God, and we are going through a situation we don't make decision based on the pressure of life or the emotions because emotions change the pressure of life can change but I want you to understand one thing. God and his word will not change. When he tells you to believe his word, he is telling you to believe what he has tested and proven that it can work. So the people who are babies in spirit They depend on human opinion They are led with all kinds of information And I always fear to tell somebody do this. I can teach you the principles but I cannot tell you to do it because when you will follow what I have said and fail you will always blame me forever. But when you follow what the word of God has said God will never fail you. Because he's yes and amen. God is God of veracity. He cannot lie. Amen. amen. God cannot lie. Mungu hawezi rudilia neno lake. Lila mbala ametuma anahakikisha kwamba analifuatilia lirudi na matokeo. Aezi sema ya kwamba eh nitakujengea nyumba. Hakuja sema I just said. Nilisema tu. Ah ah kwa Mungu akunanga nilisema tu. Akikuonyesha maono anakuambia fuata. Alimuonyesha bakuku akasema ya kwamba na maono haya lazima yatakuja kutimia. It will tarry yes but it will come to pass. This vision is sure. It must come to pass. What is your vision in life? What is your vision in life? I'm also following my vision to see it come to pass. I thank God because I'm seeing men of God here. They are really following us. Hey. Hallelujah. Men of God are really following us. Brother Weekly Fakula, you are saying, Sis Mary, I love this word. Amen. Receive it and love it more because God wants us to love his word. Unapopenda neno la mungu litakanda ni yako. Na litakufanya utofauti. Watu wataanza kuona mtu watofauti. Na bukadenesa wako hata kuona peke yako. Ataona mkiwa watu wawili. Alafu ataanza kujiuliza maswali. Situ litupa mtu moja huku ndani. Kabila washami halita sikia kukanyaga kwa watu, lita sikia mungurumo. Na lita amuka na kuacha kila kitu na wawu taingia, tuna kuanza kuokota kila kitu kijieke. Bwana isu wa sifiwe. Pendwa na penda neno la buwana. Hata mimi na ungana na ndugu wikli. Kusema na penda neno la buwana maana ni faraja ya moyo wangu. Daudi anasema ni japo pita kwenye bonde la uvuli wa mauti, sita ogopa mabaya. Alijua kwamba lazima atapita kwenye bonde la uvuli wa mauti. Akajitia moya akasema sitaogopa mabaya. Maana gogo lako na fimbo yako vitanifariji. 
neno la Bwana litakufariji. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Many people are watching Bishop Jakaiti, my brother you are watching. I thank God because of you. Mm. I thank God. I really thank God because of this word. Sister Nilam, you are saying, please God forgive me. If I sinned without knowing, following my soul, please forgive me. It is good to follow the word of God. To the letter. Follow it. It is a matunda. Kwa hivyo nataka tuingie kwa maombi, maswali yako, lakini nataka tuingie kwa maombi kwa sababu ya hayo masaa ambao tumesalia nayo nataka tuingie katika maombi nataka mtumishi wa Mungu achilie neno kwa ajili yako mimi nimeshinda hapa nikiomba kuanzia asubuhi na nashukuru Mungu kwamba leo kulikuwa na breakthrough breakthrough kiwango ambacho tulichelewa kuingia kwa sababu shetani alikasirika kwa sababu ya upenyo ambao tulikuwa nao siku ya leo na ninataka kwamba kwa sababu tumefaulu tukaingia kuwa live tuhakikishe ya kwamba tunaondoka na kikombe popote ulipo ambia mtu ni wakati wa maombi kwa hivyo tumepata kusikia mahitaji ya watu wengi watu wengi wanaomba ya kwamba Mungu akaweze kuwatendea sister bena unasema ya kwamba pray for my, my, my friend's mother florence kerubo onyango she is suffering from cancer She is receiving her healing tonight. Believe in the Lord. Sisi tuko na Mungu hapa tumekuja wao tukipokea ushuhuda. Ushuhuda ule ambao nimepokea mahali hapa. Kwa hizi siku ambazo nimeanza haya mahubiri hapa na watumishi wa Mungu. Zile shuhuda ambazo tuko nazo ni kwa vile hatujawahi pata nafasi ya kusema leo ni siku ya ushuhuda peke yake. But people are giving testimonies. Sitaki kupeana ushuda kwa sababu ni wapendeze. People are giving testimonies and I'm also taking time to thank God because of what he is doing. Nikikwambia kwamba to my prayer request I'm sure of what God is doing into the, in this platform. I'm sure that this altar is bringing a solution to one's life. So I want to welcome the servants of God ya kwamba hayo maombi ambayo watu wa Mungu wameomba tumepata kuyasoma na tumepata kuyasikia tunaanza na ndugu wetu Johnston akaweze kuombea watu wa Mungu yale ambao utaweza kukumbushwa na Roho Mtakatifu ukawaombe na kisha baadaye mtumishi wa Mungu atayakabidhi yote yale ambao pia Roho wa Mungu atamkumbusha mbele za Mungu na tutasema neema na tushukuru Mungu karibu sana mtumishi wa Mungu Baba kwa jina la Yesu Kristo wewe ni Mungu pamoja nasi Emanueli ni nani kama wewe tunalibariki jina lako jioni ya leo wewe ni upendo kwetu na kwa kiwango hiki umetupenda ukamtoa mwanao Baba tunakushukuru tunaposikia kwamba watu wako wanasikia neno lako na kulipenda maana wanapolipenda neno hili Mungu wamekupenda wewe ni namna gani moyo wangu unafurahia na kuja kwako na shukurani maana wewe ni Mungu mkuu unayeshawishi moyo wa mwanadamu kukubaliana na neno lako na kulipenda zaidi asante maana neno hili lina nguvu lina uweza lina mamlaka juu ya magonjwa juu ya majina yote ya magonjwa o asante kwa jina Yesu jina lenye mamlaka jina uliotupatia kama msaada kwetu jina tunalookolewa kwalo baba kwa mapigo yake tumepona hivyo bwana jioni ya leo ninatangaza waliosema jamaa yao jamaa zao ni wagonjwa tunawatuma bwana na neno lako tunalituma mungu likaweze kuwafikia katika jina la yesu Ewe atreatis ni jina lakini si jina saidi la jina la Yesu ninaita jina la Yesu kwenye magonjo ya atreatis haijalishi mumechukua miaka mingapi kwenye mwili na mifupa na viungo vya dada huyu Jehova ninainenea atreatis sasa na vini vyote vya atreatis vikanyauke kuanzia sasa 
vikanyauke katika mili hivyo katika jina la Yesu ewe kanza una masikio na unaweza kusikia sauti ya Mungu na kutii sauti ya Mungu tunakuamrisha kukauka sasa na kuachilia mwili huo katika jina la Yesu ninaachilia neema ya uponyaji katika mpendwa huyu ambaye anaugua kansa kwa mwili wake ewe kansa tii sauti ya Mungu sasa na uachilie mwili huyu katika jina la Yesu Asante Bwana wa majeshi tunatangaza breakthrough ya kifedha njia zinafunguka za mtu kupata kazi wakati watu wanalia hali ni ngumu wewe bado kuna njia umetengeneza ya mtu kupata mkate wake Mungu ni wewe umetuwaidi tukatoke tukajitume ili tukaweze kujipatia rishiki tukapate mkate wa kila siku hivyo mpendwa huyu anatamani kazi moyo wake unatamani kazi na Bwana amenena katika watumishi wako wamesikia kwamba anahitaji ajira ninafungua njia ajira kwa ajili yake ninafungua njia ajira kwa ajili yake kila malango utakayoingia mpendwa wacha ukapokene ema ya Mungu neema ya ajira iandamane nawe Jehova Mungu neema hii umeiachilia kwa watumishi wako katika madhabahu haya wakalisungumuza neno lako hiyo neema tunaituma kwa hawa walio na haja ya kazi ikawafungulie malango ikawafungulie malango ifungue malango ya kazi tena na tena katika jina la Yesu kila hitaji lolote ambalo Bwana mpendwa amekuwa nalo na Bwana hatuja liguza wewe ni Mungu umepata ufahamu wa kwayo Mungu ninakutuma sasa ukutanike na matamanio ya watu wako na Bwana ukatende sawia na matamanio yao pokea sifa na utukufu kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba na hata kuamini Amen Father we thank you for who you are We bless you because of this wonderful moment Our Father and our Lord we thank you for giving us this opportunity to share your word. Thank you Lord because of each and every person who has been watching. Those who have been affected in one way or another. Lord you are able to deliver them. You are able to change their life. You are able my Father to heal them. Remember their cry O oh Lord. And father give them another opportunity those who are father repenting of their sins may you restore them lord back into the fellowship again that they may be able lord jesus to walk with you again thank you father because of that sinner lord as he confesses his sin my father you are going to forgive him or her and restore her or him back to the fellowship may your will be done oh lord we bless you because of this service have the power and authority over everything my god because you are powerful and able to do more than exceedingly we love you and we bless you our king Thank you Holy Spirit of God yes. even for this place my father we sanctify it yes. and we declare grace and glory to fill this place my father yes. open every closed door yes. my father answer their prayer yes. according to your will and according to your riches yes. we thank you because of the breakthrough because of many doors and many supply oh lord yes. thank you because of the glory that my father has visited this place we believe that their life will never remain the same again thank you for everything that lord you are after to do for you are going to do it for your own glory in jesus mighty name i do pray and believe amen thank you everlasting father we give you all the glory all the honor father i thank you and it is my delight and my desire to mention certain o oh god prayer requests that are mentioned here jehovah yes. we have our sister omariba whatever that is happening with your hands at night when you sleep yes. i command that demon to live your life In now i command it to live your life now 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are here and the spirit of God is in us. For the Lord God Almighty has anointed us purposely to loosen your hands tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kila mikono zinazo gandana usiku. Izo nguvu ambazo shetani ya mekurushia. Kama ni uganga ama uchawi. Sio nafasi yetu kujua. Lile ambalo tunateka kujua ni ya kwamba damu ya yesu usiku wa leo. Inaangamiza huo uovu. Inaangamiza iyo uchawi. Chawi. Inaangamiza iyo uganga Iyo ushirikina Uo unganisho wa uchawi na uganga katika maisha yako Ina kuachilia sasa katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwono mungu alie hai Kuna dada hauja sema jina lako Lakini una, ukilio ndani ya moyo wako Unasema dada meri ni yombe Ni pate mtoto watumbo langu Kumanisha ya kwamba kuna watoto wala ambao ukonao na sio watumbo lako Na leo hina kutabiria Mungu katika jina la Yesu Kristo uliniambia kwamba nitazalisha tasa na siku ngeweza kujua ya kwamba ni kwa njia gani bali kwa kinywa changu baba ninamtabiria dada mahali ambapo ya kwamba hilo tumbo chochote kila ambacho kimefunga hilo tumbo za Mungu ninashukuru maana huyo Mungu ndiye yuko na ufunguo na usiku wa leo tunamusihi na tunamuomba kwamba kapate kufungua maana alifungua tumbo la ana lako pia linawezekana usiku wa leo katika jina la Yesu Kristo na kama ni nguvu za kuzimu Mungu tunaye mtangaza hapa yuko unaweza na mamlaka alituambia yeye ni Mungu aliyemuumba muhunzi afukutae silaha ya uharibifu kutoka kwa moto afukutae silaha ya uharibifu na hakuna silaha itakaoundwa kinyume na wewe dada yangu itakuja kufaulu kama ni midomo za watu tunaziangamiza tunazifunga sasa katika jina la Yesu Kristo na kama ni madhabau yale ambao maisha yako yaliwekwa juu yake kama vile Mungu alimwamuru Gideoni kuvucha madhabau kwa sadaka ya Yesu Kristo tunatangazia hayo madhabau yakapate kuvunjika yakapate kuvunjika yakapate kutii sauti ya Mungu na yakaporomoke sasa ili dhabau la Mungu Lililo msalisha ana kwa jina dhabau shilo likaweze kufungua tumbo lako katika jina la Yesu Kristo na wengine wale wote ambao baba wameosilisha mahitaji yao baba nasema ni asante tupatie ufahamu baba tupate kuelewa njia zako na tujue kwamba ni kwa njia gani Mungu nataka kutukomboa na tukaifuate hiyo njia ili tukaweze kuona ukombozi wa maisha yetu asante bwana ni kwa maana unatupenda jina lako limidhiwe na likainuliwe na ni kwa Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini na shukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya nafasi yako i thank God because of that opportunity that chance that time the money you have used to view us. God bless you so much. Till we meet again on a Wednesday. Kwa ibada nyingine ya nguvu kama hii. Na pia usisahau siku ya Wednesday kuunganika na sisi katika maombi kuanzia asubuhi mpaka wakati huu bado tuko katika maombi na Mungu wa amani apate kubariki na kuzidishie neema yake. I've been your host Pastor Mary Nyokonyo. I love you. I love you. I say shalom. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shalom.